Hi there, Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto looking at a Mitsubishi Jeep gasoline engine with two liter inline four cylinder. Now I did in the other video mistakenly call it an inline six. Uh, that was just me being an idiot. You can clearly see that there are only four there. Okay. And so the engine seems to run good. It looks like it could probably use a tune-up in order to run a little bit better. It's a carbureted engine, and so that carburetor could probably use a little bit of help as well. It seems like the car hasn't been run very much. Uh, with this type of vehicle, it's not very likely to be driving on the street on a regular basis because Japan is a small country, and <laughs> this is a really big Jeep. Which is funny, because it's really a small Jeep. It's just... You know, it's raised, it's on big tires, it's menacing, it's super wide. So, yeah. Very cool. The soft top seems to be in good condition. There is a rip that's been repaired, uh, but otherwise it's good. The windows are uh, clear, so easy to see through. The extensions on the fenders are, and the big tires are really the defining uh, feature of this car. I don't imagine it's going to be very fast because those are really big tires that you have to spin around with a two liter four cylinder that's from probably engineered in the 70s or 80s. <clears throat> it's got fender mirrors, so that's super cool. It's definitely a unique feeling to have the mirrors that far in front of you. Large battery that works. Master cylinder is quite small, and so the brakes aren't going to be super uh, drum brakes, four wheel drum brakes, and locking hubs you can see there. Single barrel carburetor, washer fluid canister is like the newest thing that's in there. Got an exhaust header, radiator looks good, coolant looks good. It's a large size radiator, as you can see there. Super old here, old header. The body on it is in pretty good condition. I do have some undercar pictures of the underside, but uh, the auction sheet said that there's some corrosion on the underside, and uh, that corrosion can be hard to see everything without having a lift and inspecting it with a flashlight. So it looks like the frame is pretty good from what I can see in here. I think compared to what I was expecting, it's better. There is some minor things here and there, but uh, better to take a look at once you've got the vehicle. Okay, let's go over the auction sheet and what it says here. So it's 1980, <coughs> excuse me, 84 Mitsubishi Jeep. This is a grade 3.5 with an exterior B, interior C, 2,248 kilometers on the odometer, but it's a star here, so they don't know if that's for sure. Four-speed manual transmission, no AC in this one. And it says that it used to be registered as an eight number, which is a camping car. Uh, mileage is unknown, uh, but there's nothing camping car-like in the back here. There are some half door cards, which are neat. It looks, they look like they go just from here down. Uh, and so, yes, I'm not sure about those cards. If you really, really want them, let me know and I'll ship them to you. They might go missing when we ship the car. They might think that it's considered inner cargo, but uh, this is what it looks like. It's basically the same style con construction of just poles with fabric on top of them. And uh, yeah, if you want these, please let me know. I'll ship them to you. They're a little bit heavy, but probably less than about $40 or so to ship them. Plus uh, fees for shipping, which is 2,000 yen per car. Uh, and then a boxing fee, which for those would probably be somewhere around a thousand yen. So if you want them, let me know. We can just uh, ship them in the car and see if they show up, but there's no guarantees there. Looks like there used to be a rear mount spare tire on here, but that's been removed. Obviously it would be difficult to have such a large spare tire on there. Okay, what else does it say? It says the kilometers were 62, 399 kilometers in 2008. Interior dirty, seats wear. Uh, aftermarket wheels and aftermarket exhaust, over fenders on them and one part's cracked. That's in the back right. I'll show you where that is. Aftermarket steering wheel, seats and shift knob. There is no shift knob. Maybe it came with the car's registration. I'm not sure. There's the cracked section there. Soft top is ripped and has a repair on it. Underside surface rust and corrosion and repairs and its suspension has been modified. Okay, so I'm going to lower the hood here. 
it is kind of a difficult thing to do one-handed so bear with me for a second okay and then it's got dual style it's got the latch style and then the clip style here and it's made out of aluminum and that's why you can hear it rattling there okay so I'm just going to put this one down it's windy and starting to rain here so it's a little bit unfortunate so really impressive looking Jeep looks way cooler in person than I thought that it would uh, and so that's a good thing it's very sweet to see the old style Jeeps like this with the big tires and so look how short it is <laughs> okay here's the repair These ones have uh, little extensions made out of metal in order to keep them in this shape. We need that for registration here. The doors don't really close like real doors and this one's a little bit broken as you can see. And then you can just pop these off by lifting them out. They have zipper style windows. Uh, wear seat belt at all times. So it looks like you have boat seats in here with racing belts. They're a very stiff seat, they don't uh, offer a lot in terms of comfort. Aftermarket steering wheel. Now, if you do aftermarket seats in these, usually the seats are up higher than your standard seats because of how little room that you have in here. And so with a standard steering wheel, it's way bigger than this one. It's, it's actually huge and it's difficult to slide your legs underneath it in order to get in. This one, no problem, but you do have a smaller steering wheel. Okay, everything is very 1950s in here. It's rattly and tough and manly, so yes. Not really much else to see in there, so I'm just going to close this, if I can figure it out. There we go. And that's going to be the end of the walk around, so if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the walk around here, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot, and have a nice day.